Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger. Uh, in this episode, we're going to go into the Mountain of Woe. Um, I am, of course, I of a course, I, I have Mega Freak 400, and um, I equip the uh, Mermaid Cap to uh, Luca because she, uh, it's, it's stronger than t the Taban Helm. So this uh, area is quite annoying, but it's also uh, has some important enemies that you definitely want to look out for. First off, these guys, Rubbles. Uh, what they'll do is they'll lock all your attacks and items. So you can only attack through conventional mage. You can only attack them directly. Um, but they have a high invade rate, so you won't always hit them. So you definitely want to use characters like Isla, who have a high hit uh, ratio, or can hit pretty accurately, have high accuracy. Um, but if you kill these guys, they can't, and they can't attack you either. Eventually they'll run away if you don't kill them. But um, they can't attack you uh, at all. So you definitely want to fight these guys because. Uh, when you defeat them, you will get a hundred tech points. A lot of experience as well, but a hundred tech points. That will easily help push, uh, so give you some techs that you haven't got yet. So I uh, get a lot of techs in this area, um, because, um, you know, a lot, a lot of, some of them are just like, you know, 300 to get a new tech. So you keep, you know, racking up the points. You will get it in three hit, uh, kills of those guys. Um, I'm not sure if they respawn, but I know there are some enemies that definitely respawn. Uh, in this area, such as these guys. Uh, these are the Bantam Imps. Uh, kind of sounds like a, you know, uh, rock punk music group. The Bantam Imps. I don't know. Um, but these guys, uh, if you charm them, you can get uh, Chrono's best sword. Also, uh, I believe if you, uh, if they're, the birds are still flying, uh, you know, uh, they're stronger than, than on the ground. They're they have a bird. Um, which is kind of like with the Ogans and the Hammers. When they have a hammer, they're totally different. This one, they don't change the name, but Ogans are stronger when they have a hammer. Even though they look exactly like the... I don't think they were called Ogans, though. It was Ogans and something else, but whatever. Um, and also, uh, you want to take them off the bird, I think, because you get more experience if you kill them when they're... You kill the bird first, and then you kill them. But I don't know on that 100%. Um, but yeah, this area is not one of my favorites. It's, it's really kind of hard to uh, navigate around. Um, it's, it's not hard to navigate around, and uh, it has no music, just that wind sound effect, and it's got that misty kind of uh, effect around you, so it, it's not one of my favorite areas. It's actually kind of annoying, but eh, it's not a bad area. It's not that long, and it does have some good enemies to fight, so it is uh, worth it in, in that aspect, um, you know, to go through uh, this area. So, um, I'm going to try actually... Uh, ranting about, uh, you know, tr uh, maybe in the future, you know, trying to relate the game to my rants, because a lot of times I'm just, you know, t talking in general about rants and then ignoring everything about the game, but sometimes, uh, you know, you could, a lot of th times the game can all actually relate to some rants, not always, but in some rants, in, in non-corny situations, not like, you know, um, well, see, there is love, because Chrono loves... Mo no, I'm not, not like that, but like, um, for example, uh, I read an article or something that uh, a company wants to t uh, is thinking about taking Chrono Trigger and remaking it or making a sequel or something. I can't remember what it was. It might have been a sequel. I don't know. I don't think it was remake. I think it was a sequel. But like taking the franchise and uh, making it into a Western RPG, which if you don't know the difference between Western and... Uh, JRPG. Oh, and Chrono just you learn Confuse. Confuse uh, is a confusing move because, and I think they changed the name in the DS remake, but uh, it basically is a, a physical attack that like rapidly attacks an enemy. Um, but from the sounds of it, it sounds like it would be like you know would confuse the enemy, uh, cause them confusion. But that's not the case. It's actually a really good move to use. Um, but anyway. Uh, I don't think it's a remake because they already made the DS remake. Um, but they wanted to take the franchise and make it into a Western and JRPG, or a Western RPG as opposed to a JRPG. The difference is, and I don't know everything, so if I'm, I may get some of the things wrong, you know, bear with me. I, I'm not claiming to be the master of RPG knowledge. I'm not. Um, JRPG basically is turn-based, and uh, you know, Western RPG is kind of like I would, I would say like uh, Secret of Mana. I would, I would think is a, a Western RPG. And a lot of people like what a lot of people like Western RPGs as opposed to JRPG because it's fast. You know, I, I probably have to derive from Americans, uh, you know, impatientness and wanting to get things done quickly. But and you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, JRPGs don't have any strategies; just hit, 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 hit." Um, but yeah, basically, JRPGs are turn-based and, and they're and 
uh, Western RPGs are uh, real time or, or you know constant. They're not like you stop and do a battle. You, you're constantly fighting, but you have a, a level up experience. Uh, which you know, Western RPGs, in my opinion, almost kind of blur. Like I don't know. I almost find JRPGs to be classic RPG format, and Western RPGs are almost actually kind of you know merging genres together. Not that, not that that's a bad thing, but I don't really. I don't even know what I call Western RPGs an RPG. Now again, I don't know everything about RPGs, so I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, they wanted to make Chrono Trigger into a Western RPG, and uh, people are some people are kind of rejecting that. Now I guess. You know, here's the thing: is do you, you know, first of all, a, does it have to be Chrono Trigger? I mean, I've gotten in a series debate before. I mean, do you want, to, you know, make a new franchise, or you know, is it okay? To, you know, like Kirby, for example. Kirby's do, being done Epic Yarn. He did Kirby's Curse. It's, it's still a platformer, but it's in a different style than Kirby normally is. Does that mean it's a bad thing? I mean, would I play a game with Chrono that was a Western style RPG? Possibly. I mean, I don't mind Western style RPGs. I just kind of. I don't know, I've always grown up that RPG equals turn base. You know, that's that's I mean I never really used the term JRPG for a long time. I don't even st I still don't use it really. Uh, it's just one that exists. Um, you know, turn base is how I consider uh, generic or traditional RPG. And yeah, the turn base you could say, well, it's just a bunch of attacking and hitting. There's no strategy behind it at all. Um, and I guess it, it's true in some cases, especially when you get really strong. Uh, there are, you know, cases against it and then at the same time though then you have the whole thing well then it can make it easier I mean like for example and that's not really exactly strategy as a more skill but like uh, Mario and Luigi you can dodge the attacks which again isn't really more it's more skill than it is strategy but you can dodge the attacks but then it makes the game really easy um so you know I guess the thing is uh, people complaining or people saying oh well they don't let you know people don't like uh, JRPGs we can make a Western RPG well couldn't you just Tweak the JRPG format. I mean, you could still make it turn-based, but you could add things to it. And they've done that before. They've they've taken a turn-based format and they've added things to make it a little bit more challenging. Um, and yeah, I guess I learned Fire World and Fire Sword, but they're basically uh, improved versions of the old one. I'm not sure. I already knew them, but I think it's using her new fire technique as opposed to her flare gun thing, uh, Lucas. That is. Um. But yeah. Um. But yeah. Cr Chrono Trigger. And I guess the thing with bringing Chrono Trigger back is, I don't know, the thing, the one thing that I really like about Chrono Trigger, besides Chrono Cross, but I, I never played Chrono Cross, I haven't even, you know, really know anything about Chrono Cross, so to me, Chrono Trigger is almost one of the only in the franchise. Logically, it's not, uh, you know, there, there is another game in the franchise, plus there's Radical Dreamers, uh, which is, I believe it was the, the style of Vision, don't quote me on that, but it was a, kind of an interlude, um, Kind of almost like I think it was kind of a fall or kind of like Chrono Cross. I don't know, but anyway, to me, Chrono Trigger is very. It's, it's a series that doesn't have a lot of games. Is that a bad thing? Well, I mean, think of it this way: um, if a series has less games, that one game. I don't know. If a series has more games, like. And there's actually really there's not it's it's not really a consistency that you can actually like Mario has a ton of games but there are, a lot of them are really good whereas you could say Star Fox doesn't have that many games and yet a lot of the games in the series actually aren't that good at least to the fans I don't I honestly would disagree I think a lot of the uh, games are un, are actually underrated and again that's almost kind of un, it's kind of like that's the one thing and I know I'm getting off topic but that's the one thing about the N64 here. A lot of the games that happened on the N64 because they did things that had never been done before and they amazed people with the 3D and it was the first time 3D had happened, those games have been the, uh, you know, measuring stick for every game since then that has been made. And if it doesn't meet up with that, you know, I mean, I, it, there, it, it's happened with other games too, but it seems especially these the N64 era games. Ocarina of Time has been a measuring stick for every Zelda since then. Super Mario 64, not so much, but there's so many Mario games anyway. Um, but to an extent, it's been a little bit of a measuring stick. Because uh, what I see is a lot of people saying, oh, oh, all these Mario games afterwards, all the 3D ones, are too linear. And that's, you know, that I've seen. And then, oh, Star Fox, oh, it's, it's a platformer, it's more Zelda than it is uh, flying, we don't like that. You know, okay, it's, it's, is it what Star Fox is to you? Maybe not, but does that mean that it's it's a bad game? You know, it, it gets in that whole, what, does it, what makes a, a Star Fox game a Star Fox game thing? But it's almost kind of disappointing that a lot of the N64 Air games, not all of them, of course, but a lot of them are used as yardsticks 
uh, to measure other ones. Um, and I guess that's that's the thing I worry about ma making another Chrono game. If they make another Chrono game, whether it's a remake or not, people are kind of probably going to judge it to this, and it could be a really really good game. People are going to judge it to the original. I mean, this game is really fantastic, but you know there are definitely better games, and there definitely can make a better game uh, with the characters. I I again I haven't played Chrono Cross, so you know I guess it, it just kind of worries me. Um, but next time, uh, we're going to continue onward. Uh, these guys can also, these guys, if you charm them, they get, uh, Frog's best weapon, and those little gargoyle guys, you can charm to get, uh, uh, Robo's best weapon. But, uh, next time, we will continue onward. This has been Mega 400, reminding you that Chrono Trick is an awesome game, and I wouldn't mind seeing, uh, Western RPG remake, possibly, or, uh, sequel. I don't know.